y'all. I'm Trish with Crafting Cousins. Thanks so much for stopping by our channel today. If you're new here, we appreciate you taking your time to visit us. We hope that you will like what you see and that you will hit the subscribe button down below and come back and visit often. And if you are a returning friend, thank you so much. We appreciate you guys more than we could ever truly express. Now today's video is going to be a little bit different. Normally I set up my projects and just show you how they're made, but sometimes we like to review different machines or tools. We like to talk to you guys about the things that we've learned and answer your questions. We've had several questions over the last few months from people asking about selling your crafts. Is it lucrative? Can you use it as a side hustle? I lost my job about three years ago due to chronic illness, and this channel has been a lifeline for me, but I would like to be able to make a little bit of extra money, and I've been looking at a side hustle myself. My sister actually has a laser machine, and she does really well with hers, so I had been looking at laser machines, and the X-Tool M1 really caught my attention. I like that it's all enclosed. It has a hose that will vent out the window, so you don't have all those poisonous gases in it. You don't have to use safety glasses because it has safety glass over it. There's just so many positive points to the M1. I was very fortunate that Xtool actually reached out to us and asked us if we would be interested in reviewing this machine. And since I had already been looking at it, of course, it was a no-brainer. So today we are going to open this up, take a look at what comes inside, see how it works. We'll do a couple of projects and make sure that it works as well as I think it's going to. And then I'll give you my final opinion. If this is something that you're interested in, now's a great time to be looking at these kind of things. With Christmas coming up, this could be something that you gift yourself that will pay off in the long run, or it might be something that you ask someone special for. So let's open it up, see what's in there, and we'll go from there. Now, this comes packaged really well. It was in another box, and I actually had to have my husband help me get it out because it was packaged in there pretty tightly so that it wouldn't get broken. There is a strip that you pull from the top, and then this comes open. And whenever you open up this box, there are lots of things in here. I've already peeked. You guys know I had to. See how well packaged this is? It's got lots of foam in there so things don't get broke. And it comes with lots of extras. I'm going to see how much I can get out before I have to cut away. But if we have to, we will. Now, the first thing I'm seeing on top are two mats. This is for the blade. This machine is not just a laser machine. It's also a cutting machine. It can cut vinyl, it can cut HTV, and it works very similar to our other cutting machines like Cricut and Silhouette. And these mats are for using with vinyl. The next thing is over on the side. We have boxes on both sides. We're gonna see what's in them. And this says that it is a premium materials package. That means that they're sending us samples of materials that we can use with this machine. Let me grab some scissors. I had actually seen this on another video whenever I was researching it, and I thought it was really cool that they send you items that you can practice with. You don't have to spend extra money to be able to um, work with this and, and see how it does. We've got a canvas bag in here that we can use HTV on. It also has some of these wooden tags in it, and these are great to use for stocking tags. You can actually put beads on these, initial them, or put names on them, and these are great sellers at craft shows, or even on an Etsy store, if that's something you're looking at, or on Facebook Marketplace. They also send a packet that looks like it's got some wood pieces in it, maybe some vinyl. I see some wood slices in here, some acrylic, there's all kinds of stuff in here, guys. I think this is maybe some fabric here, some more vinyl, and then two big packs of vinyl. I'm assuming that one of these is probably regular vinyl and the other one is HTV. 
but we'll get into that in just a little bit. I'm not sure that I'm actually going to use these items today. I have a couple of projects in mind that I want to try myself, and I have the things for those, so I think we're going to do those, and then we'll come back later and try some of the materials that they send with this machine. All right, over on this side, we have a couple of boxes. This is the risers for the M1. If you are going to be using the turner, which I'm assuming one of these is, this is the rotary accessory kit. If you're going to be using the rotary, which turns cups, glass, um, rolling pins, anything that's round that you're wanting to engrave on, then you're going to need the riser to lift the machine up and you're going to have to have a rotary to turn that item. And it's already included in this. So let me get this out. I imagine this is part of the rotary as well. It is. This is the rotary accessory. You can see here this is the RA2 and it comes with this kit. This is a great value, guys. I, I'm really impressed with everything that comes in here and how well packaged it is. Now, I'm going to set these pieces aside, too, because the project that I'm doing today, I am not using the rotary, but I will come back maybe in a couple of weeks, maybe beginning of the year, and do another video, and we will use the risers, we'll use the rotary, and we'll test it on cups and stuff. Okay, so it looks like I've got the extra boxes out. I'm going to lift my machine and put it on the table and we'll look at it from there. Okay, so we got it out of the box and I have to say it's not that heavy. It's probably about 23 pounds. I am still a little weak. I've been sick and so it's, it's a little bit taxing on me to lift things right now, but I was able to get it up on the table and get the plastic off of it. It has this protective film over the glass. I'm going to peel that off. All right, now it does have some foam inside of it. This is good. This means that it's packaged very well. And I think there's something actually in the foam. We have a manual here that's going to tell us how it works. It looks like we have some more wood, some vinyl, a little dog tag that you can use. So this machine also comes with another little package of materials that you can try it out with before you have to buy your own. Now, I'm also seeing this package of blades. There are five blades in here, and this is for using the vinyl cutter, okay? We have our vent in here. This is for venting the machine out a window so you don't have toxic fumes. This is the clamp for the hose. And then this is a piece that attaches to the back of the machine to hook the hose to. Now we also have our screws in here. And then we have our cords. This is our USB cord that is going to connect this to our computer. We have our power cord. And then we have another part of our power cord. It comes in two parts. Now I see some more foam in here. Inside this one. We actually have our triangles. These triangles go in the bottom of this machine. They lift up your material when you're actually cutting wood so that air can flow underneath it and you get a good airflow. So we're going to set those aside. And then there's another piece of foam back here. This thing, y'all, this thing is so well packed. Oh, and I also see a couple more mats in the bottom. So you get four mats and now our machine is empty and we're ready to put it together and start using it. Now, one thing that I really like about this M1 is that it is plug and play. It's not like other machines where you have to put it together. You feel like you need a degree to do that. I mean, some of them are pretty easy, but I'm always afraid of messing something up. Okay, with this machine, all we're going to do is turn it and on the back you're going to see the vented area we're going to take this part and we're going to screw it right over that area all right now we're going to take our clamp we'll just squeeze these ends together and slide it over 
And then we take our hose and we'll put that on to this part here. This reminds me of a dryer hose. It opens up and you can put it out a window to vent your machine with. Then we're going to take our clamp, we squeeze in the edges, get it over, and then push it back. And this is going to hold our venting hose on so it will vent the poisonous fumes out the window. Okay, now we're just going to take our cords here this is our USB cord, so I'm just going to plug it in the back, and then we'll plug it straight into our computer or our laptop. Then we're going to take our power cord, we'll connect the two pieces together, and then we take this end, and it plugs into our machine, and this end plugs into a three-prong socket, okay? Let me get this set up, and then we'll come back and we'll try a couple of projects. Hey guys, so I am back. It has probably been about a week since I did the introduction for the X-Tool M1, and I have to say, I have had a lot of fun with it. Now, I intended to only do three projects, edit this out, and get it up to you guys, but there's a learning curve to it. Just like with any other machine that you buy, there's always going to be a learning curve with the software and with what it can do. Sometimes you need to tweak it a little bit and that is what I've had to do with this. Now, overall, I love this machine. I can go ahead and tell you guys that up front. I have made so many things. I have been cutting with it, engraving with it. I've made a lot of my Christmas presents with it, and I can truly see how I can make some money with this. Now, there are one or two things that I'm not crazy about, and you guys know I'm always going to tell you the truth, especially when I am recommending something that you might end up spending your hard-earned money for. Now, for the value, this machine is absolutely great. If you were going to buy its competitor, which would probably be the basic Glowforge, that is going to be about $6,000 investment. You can get this machine for around $1,200, and y'all, it would pay for itself very easily. There is no doubt in my mind. Now, I do want to hop over and show you how easy it is to use the software. The software actually reminds me a lot of the software that you use for the Cricut, the Cricut Design Space. The X-Tool Creative Space is very similar to that. So if you're familiar with one, you should easily be able to adapt to the other. So let's hop over there, see how to use it. I will show you briefly the machine in action as it's running, but I'm not going to make you watch watch me do every single one of these projects. I'm just going to show you the outcome because really you're going to be watching the same thing over and over again if I were to set it up for each one. So let's hop over. Let me show you how easy the software is to use. I'll show you how the machine runs and then we'll come back and I'm going to show you some of the projects that I did. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to the X Tool website and download the Creative Space software. Once it's downloaded, you're going to click on the icon, open it, and it's going to give you a screen that looks like this. When your machine is closed, it has a camera inside of it, and it gives you a snapshot of what it looks like inside. Now you can see that I've added my coaster, and you can actually see where it's at. Now I'm going to go up to the left, click on image, and I'm going to find the image that I want to bring in. It's going to ask you if you want to scale it to fit the canvas, and I told it yes. Now to make it smaller I just grab it on the corner and pull up and that made it smaller and then I just move it to where I want it to be situated on my coaster. I love that you can see your material inside the machine so that you can place it exactly where you want it. Now we're going to go back to the left choose text and then click on the canvas and that's going to give me a text box. It's going to open up this little box over on the right. I'm going to highlight text and type in what I want to put there. I'm going to put Lake Harding. That's what this lake is. Then I'm going to go down to typeface and I'm going to change my font. This brought in all the fonts that I have installed on my computer. So I picked the one that I like the best. And then I'm going to size it the same way I sized my other file. You just pull in and out on the corners and then move it to where you want it to be situated. 
Once I'm happy with the placement of my design, I'm gonna go back over to the right over there where you see that it says laser flat. We want to leave that. Now, if I was using the cylinder, I would click on it and choose the cylinder, but I want it to be flat. Then I'm going to click on material, choose rock coaster, and it, you see it kind of changed how it looked a little bit. Then I click on each section of my design, go over and choose engrave, and it's going to change it so that it will fill it in. Once it's done that, we're going to go down and click on process. And then it's going to come to this other screen showing that it's processing it. It's going to give you an estimated time. I found that it always takes longer than it says it is. And then we're going to click on start. Now we're going to go over to our machine. I have my coaster. You can see it's got the little feet on the back. So I want to put those down. Then I'm going to center it up in my machine and close the screen. Now I actually put this in before <laughs> I did the other part, but it's just showing it to you this way. Then we're going to click that button on the front and it's going to start engraving it. I was absolutely fascinated sitting here watching this thing engrave. And with this machine, you don't have to wear safety glasses because the glass on top is the safety glass. If you open that top, this machine will stop. Once you do whatever it is you were doing when you opened it, then when you close it back, you're going to have to press the start button to get it to working again. So it is really big on safety. We're going to let this thing finish what it's doing and then we're going to come back and talk about my thoughts on the machine. Okay, so you see how easy it is. You just pull in your graphics. Now, I will say if you're going to be cutting, you need to have an SVG file. And if you're starting with a JPEG or a PNG file, there is a place online. I just Google convert JPEG to SVG. I think it's called Convergio, if I'm not mistaken. I'll try to remember to put a link to it down below. It's free. You can upload your JPEG or your PNG and it will convert it over to an SVG file for you. And then you can upload it for cutting. You can use JPEGs and PNGs in that program, but you can only engrave with those. They will not give you the option to cut when you are using one of those. Now let's look at some of the stuff that I did. The first project that I wanted to do was a pair of jeans. I had been watching a lot of videos researching how to work this machine before I actually started with it because I didn't want to go in completely cold. You know, you want to do your homework. And I saw a lady engrave on denim and I was absolutely hooked. I thought, oh, that could be so cute to engrave a name or an initial or a design on a pair of jeans. So I ran out and I grabbed a pair of jeans for my little granddaughter and I thought we'll practice with those. They're cheap and it's something that would be a cute gift for her if it works. Now, I will say up front, Xtool does not have this as a material in their little section that they have where they list all their materials as something that you can engrave on. So it did scare me to try it. I made sure that I had my fire extinguisher sitting right beside it just in case there was any issues, but there wasn't. I did have to use the settings that the lady in the other video used because there were no predetermined settings for this. And I will say that when I did it with her settings, it it engraved on there and it looked cute but when you touched it it just fell apart that's because even though it didn't engrave all the way through it weakened the fabric to such a point that when I touched it it fell apart so what I did was I went back in and I tweaked it for my own settings now, this could be because these jeans are really stretchy. They're not true denim. They're for a baby, so they do make them stretchy. And maybe they weren't as thick as the denim that she was using, and that could be why that happened. But I went in, and I tweaked my settings, and y'all, it did it. I was so impressed. I absolutely think these are adorable. Now, I will end up cutting the legs off of these and making shorts since I messed one of them up and she'll just have a pair of shorts for the summer. But I think this is so adorable. Now, I do think that it would work better on dark denim 
because then it's really going to stand out. This is kind of a medium shade of denim, and you can see that, you know, it does show up, but not as well as it would if it was dark. But I had to show you guys this project just because I was so impressed that it actually engraves on denim. You may have to tweak it, and if you're going to be using your machine to do that, I would absolutely suggest that you get a scrap piece of fabric and tweak it, play with it, play with your settings. You're going to have to use user-defined settings for this and figure out what the best ones are. But y'all, I could see really making some money being able to do this. You could personalize kids' clothes. You could personalize denim jackets. There are so many different options for this that I think would make really great gifts or sellers. Now, the next thing that I did was I engraved on metal. When they sent me that kit that I told you guys was just absolutely amazing, there were two dog tags in there, and my granddaughter just happens to have two dogs. She has a small one and a large one, and so I made some tags for the dogs with it, and y'all, this thing, let me see if I can get it to focus for you. Y'all, this thing engraves beautifully on this metal. I was so impressed. I absolutely love it. It is so cute. I also put her number on the back. I'm not going to show you guys that because I don't want to put her phone number out there. But I think that this is another way that you could absolutely make money using this machine or you can make personalized gifts. Now, speaking of personalized gifts, they included this cute sterling silver necklace inside of it. And so I engraved it to give my niece for Christmas. And again, it just does a gorgeous job engraving on this metal. I love this. It opens up so many possibilities for personalized gifts or personalized items that you can sell, however you're looking at using your machine. Now next, they included two slate coasters and I absolutely had to try those because I was just enamored with this thing by this point and I was burning everything I could get my hands on. So this is the coaster. You can see that it did a great job. Now I am gonna show you guys something because they send two coasters, but these coasters are different sizes. I don't know if you can really tell there, this one is a lot thicker than this one. This one is really thin. And you can tell a difference in the engraving. See how this one is not as um, bright as the other one? I think it's because that this one is so much thinner that it actually engraved deeper into it and so you can see it better. So again, that's something that you can tweak. You know, if, the, if you've got a thicker material, you're gonna want a higher power so that it will engrave on there better. Or you may like this look and want it to just be kind of like a hint of something on your coaster. Now, again, these would make great sellers. I live on this lake and I think that I could probably sell these sets of coasters with the Lake Harding SVG on there. Um, you could do initials, monograms, names. You could put sayings on them. There is so many different things that you could do with these coasters. Another beautiful gift or probably a popular selling item. Now, that's a lot of engraving, but I had to try the cutting. As a crafter, you know that I wanted to be able to cut out different kinds of shapes and words. We use a lot of words in our um, crafts that we make, especially like when we're doing wood rounds or different kinds of signs. So I set it up and I did some cutting. Now again, I'm going to stress you do have to use an SVG file for it to give you the option to cut. One of the first things I cut was this little tag and I think that it is so beautiful. Y'all, it did all of this detail work and it did it beautifully. These pieces just fell out in the machine. It cuts cleanly and I did not have any problems with it. The other thing I cut was this. This is what I will be using on my wood round signs. I'm going to stain them something like this color and then put this on top of it 
or either I will paint both pieces or maybe stain this and paint the piece white. There are so many different options. This one's actually going to be a Christmas present for my son and my daughter-in-law and I think they are absolutely going to love it. Again, look at all that detail, how intricately it cut and I had no problems with the extra pieces falling out of this. They just fell out in the machine and it cut cleanly. It cut beautifully. But I wanted to make sure that I could cut any material with it, not just the material that X Tool sent. So I grabbed some of those little square blocks, the little planks that you get from the Dollar Tree. Um, you get like six in a pack for $1.25 and that is what this is cut out of. And it's about the same thickness. Actually, I think it's exactly the same thickness as what they sent. This is three millimeter basswood and it cut beautifully. Now, the last thing I tried was engraving on wood. I really wanted to be able to do some nice engraving on there. I have some ideas for some wood rounds and some different items like that. And that is the function that has given me the most problems and when I say problems it's not anything that's big let me show you the first thing I engraved were these little stocking tags they send you probably 150 of these little wooden tags in that pack and I absolutely loved them and knew that they could make really cute stocking tags you see that it engraved very nicely but it's a little light for my taste, I like my engraving to be darker and heavier. And this was engraving using the settings that the program chose. These are the settings that Xtools program told the machine that it needed to be able to burn into this basswood and make it look good. To me, it's just a little light. It's a little streaky looking. I prefer it to be a little bit darker. Now, that is something that you will tweak. You can tweak that in your settings. If you like it like this, you can absolutely leave it like this. It looks fine. It's actually really cute. That's just my preference. So, I tweaked and I tweaked and y'all, I burned. I can't even tell you how many things I burned. I throw most of them away because with me tweaking them, sometimes I get them way too dark sometimes I got them way too light and they looked horrible and I didn't think that was something that you needed to see because that was me playing with it that was not anything against this machine now the piece that I was really wanting to do was this this would be something that you could hang on your door or it's something that you could hang on your wall and I absolutely love this design I made it myself but this is with the machine's settings this is what it looks like this was the second thing that I burned and in some areas I think it did pretty good but I was just wanting it to be darker again tweak your settings you know this wood came from Hobby Lobby this is not the wood that they sent me and that could make a difference um I did let it do the auto measure so it knew how thick it was but I just would prefer it to be darker. Now, a lot of people likes this. When I showed it to my husband, he actually liked it. A couple of my friends liked it, but I think I would just like for it to be darker. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is one of those pieces that you get from the Dollar Tree. This is one of those square pieces. So I sized my design down and made it fit on this piece of wood and I tweaked my settings. Now I did this twice. I did it once and I had a lot of blowout on it, a lot of burnout on it. So I went back and I decided let's try masking it. All I had was regular masking tape. You know, the paper tape that you get that's about this thick. And I was putting strips across it. And I have since found out that that is fine, but you have to overlap them just a little bit so that you don't end up getting this line in here. And I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it. You can really see it at the bottom of Lake. That was where a piece of the tape went across and you can see how it cut it off and across the latitude where it's got the 32.685 you can see there. That is because when I put my tape I butted it up against each other and there must have been just a little bit of a gap there that I didn't see and that's what happens 
whenever you do that. If you overlap it, you don't have that issue. I've watched several videos since then, and I've seen that when they overlap it, there's no issue with having these lines on here. Now, y'all, this is what I was looking for. I love how dark this is. I love how it pops out. And this was me tweaking the settings. I took it up. I think what it wants to do it at is like 70% power. And I took it up to 80%. And that's how I ended up getting it so dark. So overall, I love this machine. I do think that I still have a little bit of a learning curve on it. I still need to be able to tweak those settings a little bit. And once I'm happy with them, I'm going to write them down so that I know what works best with my machine and the materials that I'm using. I love that I can use this machine in my craft room. I've got it over by the window and I just lift the window up a little bit, put my hose out and I don't have that toxic smell in here. It all vents outside. So that is my opinion on the X-Tool M1 laser engraver and cutter. Now, I have not tried the blade yet to cut vinyl, and I have not tried the rotary yet. I'm going to do that probably in January because we're running out of time to put up videos in December, and I will put up another video at that time showing you how those two items work as well. So if you're still on the fence and trying to decide if it's something you want, you'll be able to see those in action as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you guys have a great week. I can't believe how close we are to Christmas. And if you're looking for a great gift to give yourself for Christmas that will pay for itself in the long run, then you might want to consider the X-Tool M1. Thanks again. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye y'all!